Many years ago, my friend and I bought an empty hull for close to nothing. We were gonna fix it up and make it look something like this. I live by a uh, relatively large and deep lake. The only problem is, for me to get to my home, I have to navigate through some really, really shallow waters. And it just, it just became apparent that, that this hull sat way too deep in the water. Um, so I was getting ready to sell it when uh, another friend came by and he said, uh, why don't you just make it into a flat bottom boat? And uh, <laughs> it started as a joke, but then I felt, why not try it? It wasn't worth that much to anyone. I might as well try it like an experiment. So I went out in the middle of the night with a laser and uh, struck a water line and I uh, chopped off the whole bottom. I laminated a glass fiber and resin bottom with uh, a engine mount and I didn't actually make the hull watertight. Instead I, I glued in a thick layer of styrofoam and the idea was that it would float on the styrofoam rather than on the watertight hull. It would become unsinkable and I would never have to worry about rainwater getting in. By the way, I had no idea if it was going to work. It turned out to float just fine and uh, it behaved so much better than I ever thought it would. It had a draft of about 10 centimeters, which is so great for a boat this size. As you can imagine, it did rock a bit when getting waves from the side. However, the sheer mass of it made sure that those movements were pretty pretty slow and, and calm. It did not stay on its course that well in a strong side wind. But it wasn't too bad considering almost half of the boat was missing. We had so much fun with her for a couple of years. We slept aboard, I even made a detachable cabin sort of that could uh, house two people. This whole experience made me dream about a bigger boat that you could live aboard for longer periods of time. And now I knew that a big boat isn't necessarily a problem in these waters. I've always had my eye on and been impressed by the practicality and comfort of these mid-cabin boats that have become so popular. They don't really do it for me aesthetically, uh, but more importantly they cost a fortune and they sit way too deep in the water. Now aesthetically, I've always had a thing for these old Swedish fishing vessels. They're great for fishing, but they're not very great as a leisure boat. Now this got me thinking, what if I could pick out my favorite characteristics from these two boats and then build a huge boat that has everything I want. The comfort of a modern mid-cabin boat and the charm of an old fishing vessel. With the draft of 10 centimeters or less, some sketches turned to drawings, turned to plans, and then eventually a model trying to figure out the proportions. And there was no turning back now. I stole and tweaked lines from some old plans I found, which is a great way to get started. To take care of the sidewind issues I had with the old boat, I'm planning to make a centerboard with an inbuilt bow thruster, something I've never seen before. Summer came and uh, it was time to get started. Now there are just too many details for me to comment on, so I'll mostly stay quiet and let you enjoy the build. My friend who I bought the first boat with actually came out to help me the first couple of days.
Now this was a bad day. During a storm that year, two great big birch trees fell over and crushed the boat. Now the good thing about glass fiber boats is I could straighten it out and fix it. It was a scary couple of days, but then I could go on as if nothing had happened. <laughs> yet so much work to be done, but I'm happy to say this is the state of Albatross today. For the rest of this project I intend on giving you video updates. So make sure to subscribe, stay tuned and join me in the completion and launching of Albatross. Do you think my design will work? Tell me in the comments below. Like or dislike and have a nice day.